Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what the psalmist says to do. And he says you do this when you gather together in the sanctuary, in that holy place. This place. This place is holy not because it's uh, filled with a whole bunch of saints, but because it's set apart. It's set apart at different times, but right now it's set apart for worship and praise. We're gathered here to praise the Lord. Now, let me assure you that the psalmist is not some kind of Pollyanna, pie-in-the-sky, rose-colored glasses person. He's not saying ignore all the bad stuff that's going on in life and just praise God. In fact, the psalmist is very realistic. If you were to read through the Psalms, I'm told that Martin Luther studied 15 Psalms every day. And he started that when he was in college and he didn't quit until he died. Because he said the Psalms were what gave him life what gave him hope and promise. They sang to him. These are ancient songs. And the psalmist, as he goes through the psalms, he's very realistic. Over 40 of the psalms are what we call laments. Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Again and again he uses the image of enemies as a metaphor for all of the things going wrong with him whether it's his neighbors that are, that are against him, whether it's his friends that have betrayed him, whether it's illness that's attacked him. Again and again he talks about this. And in the laments particularly, he is allowed to say, God, I don't deserve this. You should treat me better than this. And then finally the priest will say, ah, but remember. Remember that God has been with you in the past. And God will be with you now and into the future. And so at the very end of all the Psalms, at least the Psalms we have in our Bible, at the end of the Psalm there are five hallelujah psalms. And this one ends it all. All it says is praise the Lord. It doesn't give you any reasons for praising it. But it's as if he's giving this doxology at the end of everything that has gone on in the book of Psalms. It's a, it's a miniature picture of life. The joys and the sorrows, the triumphs and the tragedies, everything in life leads us to prayer, which ultimately leads us to praise. Again and again, he says, make a joyful noise to the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord. Now, some of us, I know, don't want to sing. I mean, we're not all as good as this choir over here, or the children that were up here, or the band that's going to be up here in a moment. In fact, I had that conversation with a gentleman one time. I was talking about how we should sing when we get together in church. And he said, oh, I don't sing. That my voice is terrible. I never sing. I said, well, it just says make a joyful noise. It doesn't have to be good. No, I would never do that in front of people. Sometime later, I was with him at a Red Hawks game. You know what they do in the seventh inning. You got the seventh inning stretch. Everybody stands up and sings, take me out to the ball game. And I was not too far from this gentleman, and he was bellowing out, take me out to the ball game. And he was right. His voice was terrible. <laughs> but you know what? At that moment, it was filled with joy. And he joined together with all the other people because for a change we were ahead. And I'm sure it had nothing to do with the liquid refreshments that he'd had prior to that. Ah, but the point is we can join together and sing these praises. In fact, the psalmist says that's what we do. He ends that, those seven verses, six, seven verses, 13 times saying praise the Lord, and the last one is an imperative. Do this. Praise God. That's what we're called to do as the people of God. Why? Ah, 
Well, when we gather together in this holy place, this sanctuary, we are reminded again and again of this one who claims us as his own. In fact, he tells, he tells the, the Jewish authorities that right now. He says, everything that I have has been handed over to me by the Father. And I'm not going to lose any of that. We hear that, we'll hear it in a little while later on today at a baptism. Where, where in that simple ceremony, we will proclaim again that God claims us in the waters of baptism and links us to his son, Jesus Christ, to his death and resurrection. And, and nothing, Jesus says, can snatch you out of the Father's hand. Wow, that's good news. Not your doubts, not your failures, not your sins, nothing. Nothing snatches you out of the Father's hand because of Jesus. And that's really good news. It's reason to praise right here. But the psalmist doesn't say, oh, it doesn't end here. Certainly, certainly you're, going to, you're going to join together and you're going to praise God in the sanctuary, but even in his magnificent firmament, everywhere you get to praise God. How do you do that? You don't want to go out singing God's praises out in, in public, do you? These musicians don't carry their, their instruments with them, and whenever they feel like it, just start blowing on a tuba in the mall. That doesn't work. Ah, but we have an example in the form of Tabitha or Dorcas. She uses the gifts that she had in order, in order to serve people. Jesus once said that inasmuch as you do it to the least of these, you do it to me. And the Father and I are one, so when we do it for Jesus, we're praising God. When we use the talents and the gifts and the abilities that we have to serve others, we're praising God. And so we, we gather together today and we give thanks for these quilts because these ladies have the talents of sewing. I tried that once. I was in the military. It was time for an inspection, and as I put on my fatigues, one of the buttons popped off. I panicked. I grabbed needle and thread. I sewed the button back on. At the end of the day, when I got to take all of this stuff off, I realized I had sewn the, my shirt to my undershirt. <laughs> I don't even try to sew. But, but these women use their talents and their gifts to produce these quilts that ultimately serve God's people around the world. It's a way of praising God. Do you like to visit with people? I know so many of you who go out and just make visits to people who are shut in, who are lonely. That's your gift. And it's a way of praising God out there in God's word, world. We have people now who are being passionately concerned about our environment, hoping, hoping that we take care of it so that future generations will still be able to survive here. That's their gift, and it's a way of praising God. Hallelujah. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him everywhere you go. Give thanks for the gift of His Son who makes you a part of his family and will never leave you or let you go. Praise God for the gift of salvation, for the gift of forgiveness, for the gift of grace. Praise God for your very being, for you have been given life and new life in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let everything that breathes Praise the Lord. Amen.